Today on Repairs 101, or is it yesterday on Repairs 101? Yesterday I took this leaf blower outside to clear my yard. Um, I live in Canada. Sometimes the weather's nice. So now I realize that there's a bit of a contradiction here with my claiming to be an environmentalist and using a machine to strip a leaf blower. The bylaws in my neighborhood insist that the properties be kept in character with one another. And everybody in my neighborhood has manicured lawns. If it was up to me, I'd just let it all grow over wild and return to the state of nature. And for that matter, as much as I want to try and make the environmentally conscious choice every time, sometimes you have to make some compromises. But, you know, I also drive this 4x4 when I go off-road instead of a horse, as much as I love horses. So let's get started. I'll just take this nozzle off so that it's not such a big ordeal to work with. And I'm just going to drain the fuel out of this for obvious safety reasons. Okay, so we're going to need some Allen keys to do this job. Now, um, generally speaking, I'll reach for one of these two kits. Bondus Gorilla Proof Tools. It's made in USA. To me, that still means made with pride and quality merchandise. Here's another Bondus tool. I would strongly recommend this for the average person who just needs something with a good selection. If you're not a serious tool collector, you're just someone who's trying to get the basics together so that they can take care of things themselves, this is a great place to start. This last screw out of the bottom here. Oh, piece of cake. Eh? So the fan housing comes right off just like that, as you see. Okay, I've got a cover here I'm going to take off. Three screws, one, two, and a third one hiding under here. Looks like I've got to remove the impeller in order to service the pull cord. It's just a And you can see there's also a backing ring here to cover this bearing. And you can see their torques. They switched from Allen. To torx. I'm using a tamper-proof Torx. Tamper-proof has a hole in the center. I've got the entire motor and fuel can right here. This is the impeller housing here, the inside of the impeller housing. And they've gone and built the pull start mechanism inside of that. Okay, here in is the recoil mechanism. Now, I've had trouble with this since day one. It doesn't recoil properly. So, oh, there goes the spring out the back. That is unfortunate. Oh, crap. This is bad design. This is just terrible. There it goes. Well, can't beat them, join them, right? Son of a... Okay, so I'm loading the spring into the housing just by winding it in. I'm not impressed with the way this machine was designed. There we go. Now, be very careful, you don't want that to jump on you. You can see the tang on this. It needs to go in that tang slot right there. So, I'm just going to drop that in there. There we go. Now the only thing to do is to line that tang up on the back of this reel here, there's a, another slot that the other tang, the tang on the other end lines up to. Now I've got the cord as short as possible, wrapped around the reel. So to preload it, opposite from which it recoils, in other words, in the direction that it pulls out. Desperately trying to hold that spring in place with the butt of my hand. Okay, so that's through. This pipe passes through here. Push the pull cord out first, and within the pipe, and then we'll seat this end. So I'm just going to shove that through the handle, pull it out a little bit. Now they had a regular stopper knot. I like to use a figure eight knot here. Cover on. That just drops in there like that. And that's what's going to keep the spring from coming out. Okay. This is a. Uh, most uncivilized. Look at that, it still doesn't work properly. Checking that I had the right tension on the on the spring every time. I redid it and I redid it and I redid it again. Make sure that I was doing it correctly. And in the end, it up 
operates exactly the same as it did before. This seems to have been designed to make it as difficult as possible to make a repair. For instance, this chainsaw, three screws, and you've got the start mechanism in your hand. Okay, so look at that now. That's a civilized start cord mechanism. Three screws and it's in your hand. Okay, so I'm gonna put this back together again, nice and easy. I wish it was nice and easy. 21 fasteners, 20 screws, and a big fat bolt. And uh, Oh, and also you gotta take the fan off too, right? So that makes 22 when you count the nut on the end of the drive shaft. It holds the fan in place. So I'm gonna make two modifications here. I'm gonna add a little dry lubricant this little bit of graphite dust powder on the outside edge here. Besides a whisper of dry lubricant, I want to add spacers here and here to push back the, the cover just a tiny bit. Unfortunately, I don't have any washers that are right size, so what I'll do is just take these electrical connections and nip the end of it off with my side cutters. But let's see, just put that in there like that, and then hold on to this end, let that end fly, and Voila, homemade washer. So I'm threading the washer onto the bolt. This should take care of my spacing problem. Back this off just enough so that it will rotate freely. And these uh, homemade washers here, they're in a nice soft metal that'll crush down and conform. Well, that's the smoothest it's run yet, without question. But it recoils properly. I mean, honestly, is it reasonable to ask me to take the entire motor and fuel tank off in order to change the pull cord? I'm going to suggest it's not reasonable, okay? Put that bearing back in so it lines up nice and straight. 